All right, I'm going to be doing a video today um, on uh, this issue of the whole pandemic thing, how it relates to uh, the AIDS epidemic of the 1980s and um, how it ties into the, you know, everything that's going on. And I'm going to be playing a video. I'm just going to wait a few minutes here, let some people come along. Not an announced live stream, so we'll be you know better with announcements in the future, but I wasn't sure when I could put this thing out. So a lot of people will watch this after it's been released. So just wait here for a few minutes, see if anybody's going to come along. Um, it, 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 okay, let me mute that over there. All right, um, so what I'm going to do here is uh my brother i'm going to actually bring up the video of um the dr robert wilner and this is going to be very very interesting um uh, let me see here hold on a second let me get this thing there all right. Um, tell you what, let me do it. Uh, trying to figure out the best way to do this. Just bear with me for one minute. Okay. Share screen. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can see it. Um, hi, everybody out there um i'm gonna play a little bit of this and just just tell me just say yeah we can hear it or no i can't hear it or or whatever let me just try this and then tell me if you can hear it it means it is a terminator just like the movie it terminates life okay can everybody hear that you just give me a little bit of feedback i just want to make sure my audio is good did everybody hear what he was saying? Good. Okay. Then what I will do here, uh, get rid of some of this other stuff. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to play this video. And I want to give some commentary along with it, and I'm going to be actually backing up some of what Dr. Wilner is saying here with other research I'm going to be showing. I actually have here a drug handbook. This is one that doctors would have, um, one of my wife's collection here, nursing drug handbook. Um, you can see it right there. I'll show it in better detail here in a little bit. But it actually talks about the AIDS drug, uh, AZT is what it's called. We're going to be discussing this, and it's going to be a really interesting tie-in to uh, what's going on with the current coronavirus thing. And you'll see it's that Fauci is involved with this whole thing. And um, just to before we get into what's going on here, I'll just show you. This is Dr. Robert Wilner is his name. There he is. And it says here, let me actually, let me put this over here. Excuse me. There we go. Um, here he is. If you go to Wikipedia, um, it says there uh, about when he was, you know, birth and death there. But um, it says here, following month on October 28th, 1994, in a press conference at Greensboro, North Carolina Hotel, Wilner jabbed his finger with blood. He said what was from an HIV infected patient. Wilner was heavily influenced by the research of AIDS denialist Peter Duisberg. Who is, which has been discredited by the scientific community. <laughs> they always do that. You gotta love that. Some guy comes out and says, hey, evolution's wrong, that he's a scientist, they'll, they'll discredit it, you know, whatever. But uh, notice when he dies. He dies of a heart attack, April 15th, 1995. And it's a well-reported, well-known fact that the CIA has ways of killing people and making it look like a heart attack. So I believe firmly that the guy was murdered. Um, I do. And you say, well, why wouldn't the Lord protect him? Well, because you'll see he's lost in the video. He says some things about the Lord, which I will correct from the scriptures. Um, so, but we're going to play this now. And um, 
I'm going to give my commentary as we go through it. But it's a very, very important video. So here we go. Just first point I want to make there. He is a medical doctor, doctor of philosophy, MD, PhD. Okay, folks, on uh, behalf of Project AIDS International, I'd like to thank you for coming to this press conference. Uh, Dr. Wheeler, uh, MD, PhD, will be giving an explanation in just a moment on what we're doing here uh, and what he will be doing with our volunteer, who is Kim Reyes, who is an HIV positive individual. Uh, today, Dr. Wilner will be infecting himself. He will first explain what he will be doing as well as why he will be doing it. Directly after uh, his inoculation, Dr. Wilner will be explaining uh, any questions that you have. There will be a question and answer period. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Wilner. I don't know if you can hear me without the mic. I can hear. Okay. And because I've done this uh, needle sticking several times already, I'm familiar with some of the things that are put into the press afterwards. And so I want to make a few things very clear before I even start. I have a certificate in sex education, and I taught for a couple of years at the University of Miami Medical School during sex education week to the medical students. I want to make it perfectly clear that I support responsible sex. I call it responsible sex because it goes much further than the concept of safe sex. And I'm not so sure that I know what safe sex is. During this period of time in which the, especially young people of this country have been threatened with AIDS, a death dealing disease supposedly, as a consequence of irresponsible sexual behavior, the incidence of venereal disease has climbed and the incidence of uh, births without benefit of marriage has also climbed but not AIDS. Really very interesting. So this apparently does not have an effect on the sexual behavior of our young people. No, in other words what he's saying there he's just looking at this from a purely medical standpoint. Fornication is obviously wrong. It's condemned in scripture. That's sex outside of marriage. Um, but he's looking at this thing and he's saying you know if AIDS is such a deadly thing, then there would be a rise in AIDS there among, you know, young people that are committing fornication, and it's not there. Other sexually transmitted diseases are climbing, um, but the, using scare tactics is not stopping the youth, you know, which I agree with completely. You don't use scare tactics, you use scripture, all right, showing that it's wrong from the Bible, all right? So, I mean, secular scare tactics, you know, obviously you tell somebody you're lost and going to hell, you know, ruining your life with fornication, well, that is a good scare tactic because it's a real one. But the phony science is not going to scare people. So, you know, kind of like the modern thing that's going on right now. But let's continue. And I never for once thought that ever would. It never has throughout history. There's only one thing that will affect sexual behavior. And that's understanding what the responsibilities of sex are. That number one, you're dealing with the feelings and emotions and the lives of another human being when you enter into a sexual contract. Number two, you can contract six venereal diseases. And number three, an unwanted pregnancy can occur amongst heterosexuals, at least. These are very serious and very important considerations. And the last of consideration and responsibility in this area creates a cost in human uh, suffering that's incalculable 
and the cost in monies that is incredible. So don't anyone out there say that I am for irresponsible sex. But I am against lying to our young people. I am against causing death and destruction through that lie. I am against telling uh, a lie to the young people so that they continue in other behaviors which are truly causing AIDS. Now, you've got to ask yourself the reason that I'm here today. And it's been suggested that I'm here to sell a book called Deadly Deception. There's only Interesting, by the way, if you check into getting a copy of Deadly Deception, I think the cheapest one I saw anywhere was $495. Um, there are certain books that the Jesuits do not like, uh, Fauci being a Jesuit, of course, if you don't know that. Um, but uh, there are certain books that they don't like, and they basically buy them all up, and then you can't get a copy of it. And uh, I've seen that with different books, and it's very hard to get some of these different you know, materials and whatever else. So, yeah, his book... The deadly deception is very, very hard to find. Um, very interesting. But um, see one of your comments here. Let me just stick that on screen real quick. Um, AZT killed AIDS patients, similar language being used now. Fauci was in that hoax too. Yeah, that's what this video is about. We're going to be showing the proof of all that. Thank you for your comment. So we'll continue here. And, you know, it's, it starts out kind of slow, but just stick with it because some of the bombshells this man drops are going to, you're going to learn a lot. I learned a lot from watching it, and I'm going to back up a lot of what he's saying with proof. So um, kind of add to what he's saying a little bit here, because it relates perfectly to this whole pandemic hoax that we're going through right now. But let's continue. There are two ways that you can get the truth to people. By your own words out of your own mouth, and by putting them on paper. And that's the reason for the book. We're talking about probably the most horrible scandal and scam ever perpetrated, not only in the name of science, but in humanity and in all history. Today is December 7th. And I was uh, 12 years old when the attack on Pearl Harbor came. And I remember World War II very well. And it's a very significant day today because I see an incredible parallel between what is going on in the so-called AIDS epidemic and what happened in the years preceding and resulting in World War II. The great lie of Hitler. It's amazing. I think he would envy the job being done by members of the National Institutes of Health and even the media especially in this country. I charge the media with part of the responsibility, and a very significant one, in a current Holocaust that can end up being worse than the one that occurred during World War II. How about that? I charge the media with the you know, Holocaust that's going on. Yeah, kind of like the whole coronavirus thing. Uh, the governments of the world would have no control over the people if it wasn't for the media using propaganda to scare people. Um, may the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke harshly all the members of the lying media that have destroyed people's lives. I pray for God's harsh judgment to be upon them. Mercy if they decide to get out of it, if they repent of it, anybody in the media. But you better do some serious repenting, get out of the thing and explain what you were part of if you want to be legitimate okay but let's continue here. there's some really big information coming up and by the way let me just show you this he's talking about this thing being a huge big scandal and whatever else um, let me just share this worldometer.com here you have uh, HIV infected people 41 million nine hundred sixty five thousand there's another one sixty three nearly forty two million people diagnosed with HIV AIDS and that, that's going to be very significant to you when we get done with this video because you're going to realize how big of a scam this whole thing is you'll see it but look at the deaths caused by HIV AIDS this year 941,351 and they're they're worried about coronavirus 42 million people 
get back to the video. When it was first announced that Dr. Robert Gallo had found the virus that probably caused AIDS, that announcement was made with Margaret Heckler in 1984 to the press and to the media without one single scientific document appearing in any journal in the United States. And as we know now, without any proof whatsoever that the virus caused any disease. The media picked up on it for the sake of a story. And soon the virus that probably caused AIDS was now the virus that caused AIDS. It was proven in the press and nowhere else. Now it's interesting, a lot of... <laughs> It was proven in the press and nowhere else. Hello, COVID-19. Yeah. Something with, you know, that when they first came out with it, well, it's just, you, know, you can get kind of a fever, a little bit of tightness in the chest and some coughing, kind of like the cold, you know, or the flu. But all of a sudden it's deadly and we have to shut the whole world down. It's media. Continue. Questions are asked of me whenever I appear before the cameras and do what some people have called a stunt, to sell books. I'm from the planet Earth. I honestly believe, honestly believe that these individuals are from the planet Uranus. How anyone could suggest that I would stick with myself with a virus that is supposedly deadly for the purpose of selling a book, that's complete insanity. And I will put the lie to the individuals of the NIH, particularly Gallo and Fauci and Hazeltine and Essex, and the rest of these scoundrels of the worst order. Criminals guilty of genocide, without a doubt. I invite them to take me to court. I wish Burroughs Welcome would take me to court because they have been putting out a killer drug knowingly. Okay, just name Fauci, okay. Anthony Fauci is part of this. And you say, oh, well, this Robert, he said Gallo, Fauci, another couple of them. Here you have Gallo right here, Robert Gallo, the guy who supposedly founded the whole AIDS thing. Um, this guy here, it, if you go down through, um, he went to Providence College. See it there? Private Catholic University. Hmm, Catholic. Isn't that interesting? And then they had down here with the HIV AIDS research thing. Look at this, 1989 at a conference sponsored by the Catholic Church. Huh, at Vatican City on HIV AIDS. Gallo promised attendees that there would be an effective vaccine by 1992. Do we see how the game is played? We have a virus. Oh, it's a terrible virus. It's going to kill lots and lots of people. We have to have a vaccine. We have to get some kind of special vaccine. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear about the quote unquote cure for AIDS here coming up, AZT, which one of you commented about it. Right here it is. I have it in the drug handbook. Okay. Let me just read it a while. Page 189. Drug handbook. I'll try to hold this thing up. Zidu Zidu Vudin. It sounds like voodoo. <laughs> Zidu Vudin, I guess is how you would say that. As as I Azido Thymadine. Fancy. But you can see it right there. Tell you what, let me let me stop sharing here just for a minute. Um so you can see this thing. Come on, focus. There we go. Got to get myself out of the picture. Okay, right there. And action nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor that it inhibits replication of HIV by blocking DNA synthesis. It alters your DNA. Right up here, you can see that. Come on, focus for me. Is that gonna focus or not? 
the camera doesn't like to focus on words apparently but um, it goes down through and it talks about different things and uh, you know adverse reactions headaches seizures paresthesia malaise insomnia asthenia dizziness somnolence <laughs> healthy you know I mean this is the guy I was talking about the other day in the live stream that there are no side effects to drugs they are known effects okay right there Where we have it there right here okay the side effects it does not want to focus I don't know why that thing doesn't want to focus too good there okay sorry it's it's in there I mean, if you can kind of make it out it's kind of blurry but this is the one that's really amazing though um, advise healthcare worker considering zydovudine prophylaxis after occupational exposure after needle stick injury for example okay in other words you're, you're putting it in somebody you're, you're injecting this you know AZT stuff into somebody and you but mistakenly hit yourself it says the drug's safety or efficacy hasn't yet been established. Okay, wait a second. 2002 drug handbook, AZT, its efficacy hasn't been established yet. They're using this stuff for 10, 20 years. We don't really know if it works yet. We know that it creates drug interactions. This is their source, okay? This isn't conspiracy stuff. This is what nurses are given, okay? Doctors, nurses have access to the stuff right there. Here's the, we know what side effects happen. And if you're taking it with drug interactions, you can have interactions with other drugs. We know that. But as far as it working for patients, we don't really know. We have no idea. Um, we do know that it, it uh, blocks DNA synthesis, messes with your DNA. Their sources. You can call me crazy or whatever you want to call me. It doesn't matter. Um, their own sources say it's bad. It's toxic. Okay. And, um, you know, it goes into different things. You know, dilute drug before administration. You'll hear that later on. Why they have to dilute this drug, this AZT stuff. It's essentially a form of chemotherapy. That's why you get on that stuff and it kills you. It's slowly, it's a slow kill weapon, right? And after watching this guy, I'm convinced that the big pharma thing is an inquisition. I've called it that for years, but you know, they're slow killing people. You saw it with the, if you saw the nurse at the Elmhurst hospital, the Aaron, her name was, and they're putting people on ventilators and they're giving you all this sedative stuffs and then strapping them down and everything. And then they slow kill them. AZT is a slow kill weapon, essentially. And Fauci's part of it. And I'm going to show you it again. I'm going to let him, I'm going to let Dr. Robert Wilner talk about the thing of chemotherapy being used, that this AZT is a form of chemotherapy. It was, it was toxic. It was pulled off the shelves years ago. And then they brought it back out as AIDS medicine. Um, I'm going to let him tell you that. And then I'm going to actually show you a old video of Fauci speaking years ago when the whole AIDS thing was just coming out and everything. And he shows chemotherapy injections as part of the treatment him speaking so we'll get back to it here okay so but you see the thing there of robert gallo this catholic church thing right there on wikipedia i thought that was rather interesting um but check this this photo out here let me show you this photo right there you have it you have fauci Right here, Robert Gallo and Hans Zerhausen, right there, a German virologist. So here you go, Gallo and Fauci, two partners in crime, genocidal madmen, murdering people, knowingly murdering people. 42 million, went up from 62 to 63, now it's up to 81. Just in the time I've been doing the video, people with HIV AIDS. And look at that death rate. Hmm. Nearly a million already this year are dead because of this thing. 
And it's not the disease, it's the treatment that's killing them. But well, let's get back to the video here. We'll watch some more of this. Because in a court of law, I would have the opportunity to, pro to provide the absolute proof and evidence, as I have in my book, Deadly Deception. Now, I'm not alone in what I'm doing here today. How does the press escape such obvious truths? Why would the finest virologist in the world, the most noted virologist, member of our National Academy of Sciences, Peter Duesberg, why would he put his entire career on the line? What did he have to gain? He's already lost his laboratory and his funding. He can't take away his professorship because he's tenured. Okay, he's talking about Peter Duesberg there. And, you know, that's what they do to these guys. Um, you know, if you watch the expelled video with Ben Stein um, on the whole evolution thing being taught in universities, a professor comes out and says, I don't believe in evolution. I proved that there's intelligent design, at least. I'm not saying you have to believe in God or get saved or whatever, just intelligent design. And whoosh, they're fired. They'll pull their funding. They'll pull all kinds of stuff. Universities and government are funded by the very people that they're supposed to investigate. The old fox guarding the hen house trick. Okay. We're going to give you the money. We are the pharmaceutical industry. We're going to give you the money to tell us if our drugs are safe. Make sure that you say they are, or else we'll just kind of pull away that funding a little bit. You know, it's industry funded research. <laughs> it's kind of a, ridiculous when you think about it. But this Peter Duesberg comes out and, and you saw on Rational Wiki, or not Rational Wiki. I just want to say that because they attacked me. So, you know. But uh, it, on Wikipedia, they said that Peter Duesberg has been discredited, you know, by the scientific community. Yeah, in other words, those who go along with it. But uh, let's continue. So amazing stuff coming up here that this man says. Why would a Charles A. Thomas, professor emeritus of Harvard, say the same thing? Why would Kerry Mullis, who won the Nobel Prize in virology last year, why would he stick his neck out? What did he have to gain? These are the questions reporters should be asking. And in order to sell a book, I would inoculate myself with a virus that supposedly is deadly. Ever think that maybe we all know something that you just don't get? That if you take the virus out of the equation, you have a perfectly understandable disease with a perfectly understandable answer. And I might remind you, in case you are not aware of it, and if you haven't read my book, that we have known what causes acquired immune deficiency diseases for at least 70 years. It's in the medical textbook. It's there for you to read. Number one cause on the face of this earth is malnutrition and starvation. Did you get that? The number one cause of HIV AIDS is malnutrition and starvation. Hmm. I wonder what they're trying to do with the whole COVID-19 thing. You can't go to work, so you lose your job. Then you can't, eventually you can't buy groceries because you have all your other payments and everything else. See? Malnutrition, starvation, immune system drops. You see? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Think about what they're telling people here. Oh, this person has malnutrition. Oh, look how bad it is in Africa. You're going to hear him say this here in a little bit. It's real bad in Africa. Oh, there's so many people dying of AIDS. They're dying of starvation. They're dying of malnutrition. Doesn't mean they have AIDS. But see, by having this AIDS thing, then they can control people through fear. They can say, we need a vaccine. We need more funding. We need more money. And Fauci is getting filthy, stinking rich off of this stuff. He'll talk about that too. And again, he knows Fauci. He knew Fauci. So don't say, well, he's just some conspiracy guy. This guy is a full-on medical doctor, believed the AIDS propaganda early on, doing all that stuff. We'll keep watching. You'll see what I'm saying. That's Africa. Look to the headlines of the October 3rd issue of the London Times, Sunday Times, last year. 
and inside headlines that screamed across two pages the plague that never was. Speak to Philip and Evelyn Kreiman, who had part charge with an organization of 250 people, their own hospital, their own doctors, their own laboratories, who have lived in the heart of the epidemic, supposedly, or the supposed epidemic, for five years. There is no epidemic. It doesn't exist. That hey, man. <laughs> there is no epidemic. There is no pandemic right now with the coronavirus thing. It doesn't exist. It's a very harmless or a very harmless virus. This coronavirus thing, if it is even real, it's very, very harmless. Like I said, if it's even real, and people that are dying from it, either they're faking it, they're saying oh, they died of complications of coronavirus. Some guy drops dead of a heart attack, and they they do a little test. Oh, he had coronavirus, so it's he died of complications of coronavirus. The coronavirus caused the heart attack. You know, you get in a car accident or something. Oh, coronavirus did it. Write them down, another statistic, and they're faking the numbers and everything else. So let's continue. They are there. They're not some character who goes through from the World Health Organization and says, oh, I've seen the people dying. Of course you have. We all saw them on television in Somalia. What do you think you were looking at? That was AIDS due to starvation, due to malnutrition. It's no big secret what's causing AIDS. We've known it for 70 years. Number two is drugs. And don't just think of street drugs. Because the number one cause of AIDS today is actually two medical drugs. AZT. A drug that was discovered in the 60s as a chemotherapeutic drug for cancer and was shelved because it was too toxic to treat cancer, a drug worse than cancer. <laughs> a drug worse than cancer. Chemotherapy. What is chemotherapy? Well, if you look at World War I, mustard gas is basically what is now used for chemotherapy. You know, I don't remember the chemical name and all the other stuff, but you can check it out. They're po po using poison with the concept of if the poison kills the cancer before it kills the person, then we're successful. If it kills the person, oh, oops, sorry about that. I literally had an uncle that had cancer, and he died of the chemotherapy. You know, and how many more people are like that, all right? But you just heard him say about the chemotherapy thing, you know. So let's go here. Now we're going to watch a little bit of actual anthony fauci this was uh 1984 at the national institutes of health you can see it right there dr anthony fauci okay and this was posted by the way july 26 2019 and this is the nih's youtube channel again this is their sources we're going to original sources i showed you this earlier now we're going to go to the nih's youtube channel I have more subscribers than I am. Huh, that's interesting. But uh, check this out. This is Fauci speaking many, many years ago, 1984. Watch this. With bone marrow transplants and lymphocyte transfusion. It did not work. Why didn't it work? It did not work because the virus was still in the individual. Immunological enhancement. We're now trying factors that are made by the lymphocytes giving them to individuals for a number of reasons okay immunological uh enhancements or whatever he said there um or you could just tell people to get their health in order you know let's let's synthetically make people's immune system better let's just let's use chemicals because see we can make money at that if i tell you just to start eating better get your health in check get exercise get better sleep you know i don't know read the bible you know, start praying. Oh, well, then all of a sudden the people aren't going to get sick as much. Well, you can't do that. Let's just let's use some petrochemicals to try and help people's immune systems so that they don't get the autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Think about what's being said here, but let's keep watching. To try and boost up their immune response to perhaps curtail the virus in a way that we don't think will completely eliminate it but curtail it enough 
so that when we develop, we're not going to eliminate it. We're just going to curtail it. <laughs> what? Look at, and then look at this giant remote in his hand too. It's it's so funny. You know, 1980s technology here. You gotta love this. It's this gigantic remote. You know, for his PowerPoint presentation. Look at this. An agent that has specific activity against the virus, namely something that can kill the HTLV3. Then we can combine that with these reconstitution experiments, which will hopefully no longer be experiments, but will be common practice. And those two things together might then rid individuals who are already infected with the virus by a combination of killing the virus and reconstituting the immune response. And you do it all with chemicals. Right, right, yeah, sure. And finally, as you are, I'm sure have read in the papers, given the fact that we now have the virus in our hands, it is quite possible, in fact, it's invariable, that we will develop a vaccine for AIDS. Uh-oh. Chemotherapy directed against HTLV-3 virus. So what Dr. Robert Wilner said, that they're using chemotherapy, a chemotherapy drug, AZT, they're using this thing. It messes with your DNA, according to the nurse's drug handbook. Okay. And they said, after all these years, this is 1984, and they're saying, after all these years, that the drug's safety or efficacy hasn't yet been established. Right there, page 191, Nurse's Drug Handbook. But right there it is. Now that we have the virus in our hands, now we know that we can use chemotherapy, you know, drugs. Uh, chemotherapy kills people. Okay? And there you saw it. This is National Institute of Health's YouTube channel with Fauci. So don't give me this thing of, oh, well, you're just, you know, coming up with conspiracy theory stuff and all oh, these conspiracy theorists are coming out against the coronavirus thing. And, and again, see the same language. It's the same exact language. There's a virus and we're going to work on that vaccine, buddy. I'll tell you why. Why? Oh, because my Bible says for the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. That's why. These guys want to make a lot of money. They want their uh, fame and fortune. And they'll do it through the medical inquisition, murdering people to get their money. You see, because, hey, you come up with any kind of a thing out there, movies, cars, houses, clothing, whatever. Wait, not everybody's going to be in, you know, interested in that. You can't fear monger people into getting that. But disease? Oh, boy. Some deadly infectious disease, hey, you can scare the whole world's population into shutting down their economies, destroying themselves and begging you for the vaccine. Please, please give us the vaccine because the disease that, you know, we should stay home from and get better at home, it, you know, it's so deadly that we need a vaccine. Let's continue with the Robert Wilner thing. It's going to be used to treat people who are immunosuppressed. Now let's go back to the other causes of AIDS. So it's not only street drugs, but medical drugs. But now three is radiation. What do they worry about at Chernobyl and Nagasaki and Hiroshima? But number four is chemotherapy. Number four. The number four cause of death of acquired immune deficiency diseases chemotherapy and the most toxic chemotherapeutic drug of all times azt is what they're now using to treat aids and the concord study completed last year now can you imagine saying to the world where was the press where are you people here, they're giving a drug that costs thousands of dollars a year, and it doesn't do any good. That's if you want to believe that. But did anybody here bother to look at the insert, the paper that comes with the drug? It's a DNA terminator. It means it is a terminator, just like the movie. <laughs> okay, I showed that right here in the nurse's drug handbook. I'm sorry I saw when he said audio is very bad. I'm sorry, it's an old video. 
it's not high definition, whatever else. The guy died in 1995, was, you know, killed, I believe, in 1995. But it says right in here that it changes DNA. You know, um, get my page here again. Uh, nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor that inhibits, inhibits replication of HIV by blocking DNA synthesis. Right there, nurse's drug handbook. So, yeah, what he's saying, absolutely. Let's continue. It terminates life. You terminate DNA, you terminate life. And they talk about side effects in the insert. When are you going to learn there is no such thing as a side effect in medicine? It's an unwanted direct effect. Exactly. There are no side effects. It's an unwanted direct effect. Oh boy, remember that one. There are no side effects, only unwanted direct effect. All the drugs that are listed in this thing, every single one of them, they list all the side effects, the side effects. They know. They know that these things are toxic. They understand it. Every doctor out there should be sued for malpra malpractice. They're killing their patients, knowingly killing their patients. They don't know it. Let's continue. And you know what one of the unwanted direct effects of AZT is? Lymphoma, cancer, one of the diseases of AIDS, as they call it. Oh, another so-called side effect, which is really an unwanted direct effect. Pancytopenia. You need a definition? Pancytopenia. Pan. All. Cyto. Cells. Penia. Loss of. Loss of all your cells. That's AIDS. That is the definition of AIDS. So AZT, by definition, by their own drug insert, causes AIDS. And nobody survives AZT. That will eventually lead to your death. And they've cut the dosage way down. Because it was killing them too fast. It's like giving somebody a large dose of strychnine and they die within five minutes. And so the next person, you give them a, a, a few drops of it and they last four or five days and you say, strychnine's a wonderful drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, they have to cut it way down. Oh, he's crazy. He doesn't know anything. Really? As I said earlier, um, patient teaching. Um, or excuse me, IV administration. Dilute drug before administration. Page 191, nurse's handbook, right there. Dilute drug before administration. What he just said. Let's continue. This person lasts five times longer. This is the kind of thing that they present to the world. Now, I have offered for over a year now, and I continue to offer it. $100,000 to anyone who will give me one scientific document that proves that HIV causes any serious disease. It doesn't. It is a scandal and a scam beyond belief. The virologists who are responsible for this, what do they have to gain? Now, I don't know what Dewsbury had to gain or Charles A. Thomas or Carrie Mullis. He already got his Nobel Prize. Why did he come out and say it? And he's the one that found the test, the uh, PCR reaction. And he said, I'm pause it here for a minute. This cameraman, whoever's on the camera is awful. I mean, just they're walking all around with the camera throughout the video here. I apologize. Uh, this isn't me doing this with the video. It was a terrible cameraman back there in 1994. So. I apologize. That there is no body of evidence that supports that the virus causes any disease whatsoever. But what about the individuals who have perpetrated this lie? They are all multi-millionaires. What do we have to say about the National Institutes of Health? When a private laboratory, independent laboratory, found AZT to be 1,000 times more toxic than the laboratory of the NIH. We can understand a 5% error in a laboratory, even a 10% error. But a 10,000% error, or 100,000% error, that's fraud. 
And as I understand it, the word has gone out, and there's even documents and letters to prove it, that the CDC, the same organization that let blacks go untreated with syphilis, well documented. Just yeah, the CDC, founded by the Jesuits, currently Robert Redfield is a Jesuit. Same people, Fauci, Jesuit, all these people. Um, they, they knowingly were infecting men with syphilis, black men with syphilis, and letting them go out and, and, you know, giving it to women and things that they were fornicating with and whatever else. And just, oh, we're just going to watch what happens. This is interesting. CIA with Project MK Ultra was going out into bars and things and putting LSD in people's drinks to see what would happen to them. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb was part of the MK Ultra project with the CIA. Look it up. These people are criminals. And they all tie back to the Catholic Church. How about that? Almost like the Bible's true when it says back in Revelation 17, she's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But let's continue. Just to see what would happen with the disease. The same organization who had to admit that they can't give, on an, give in on the AIDS thing now because nobody would ever be able to trust the government. I think the last election tells us what the people think about government. But science is acting no differently than politicians do. And now we have disease by politics. Isn't it strange that the same day or the day after Robert Gallo filed for a test for HIV after it was announced? This sounds like premeditation. You mean he just happened to have this test available? And so the same day or the following day, he filed for a patent? He had a test. He was simply looking for some kind of a disease he wanted to apply it to. Okay. Hmm. So he patents a test for HIV AIDS and then later discovers HIV and AIDS. Huh. All right. If you don't remember, Robert Gallo, right there is the man's face. I'm assuming he's still alive, um, unfortunately. And there he is, Gallo with Fauci. These guys are all tied in. Back to the video. And that test. 30,000 Russians who tested positive for HIV were then tested with another test that's supposedly far more accurate to confirm the positivity. And 66 out of 30,000 proved to be positive. That means that the test HIV is 99.997% inaccurate you want to take a test that's three thousandth of a percent right and you're going to rely on that but that's what they're doing to people out there they're taking a test that is not only invalid it's totally misleading in fact when you get results like that then i would say you're going to be more correct that if you're red as being negative consider yourself positive and if you're positive consider yourself negative by the way at the request of many individuals, I did go for a test a couple of weeks ago in New York City. It's the biggest clinic there that does more testing than anybody else. And the doctor who ran it was bragging about the fact that he did more. When I told him about the book I wrote, he said, shh, don't say anything. My patient's not here. Okay. I tested negative. <laughs> and of course, Fauci said that you need, or when he was answering what I did in, uh, Cleveland, a week ago, he said, well, he's going to have to stick himself 300 times to transmit the virus. Where are you people in the press? So Fauci, in other words, you're going to see it later on. He does it again. He repeats the same thing. Guy comes up. It's supposed to be HIV positive, pokes him in the finger, gets the blood out, and then he rubs the needle in the, in the guy's blood, sticks it in his own finger. Dr. Robert Gilner sticks it in his own finger and he says, okay, there you go. Now I supposedly have AIDS, right? Because this guy's HIV positive, so now I would be. He's been doing this for a while and he's saying, there's no proof. Show it to me. Goes, gets a test. No, he's not HIV positive. Even though he's been taking other guy's blood, sticking it in his, in his own blood stream. And what's Fauci say? Well, he'd have to do that 300 times in order for, for him to get AIDS or whatever. <laughs> what? Let's continue. 
300 times to transmit a virus? You cannot have an epidemic under those circumstances. <laughs> if you can't transmit it by blood, you certainly can't tra transmit it sexually. Unless you're into the real sadistic acts during sex. I don't know how much blood you want to draw. <laughs> it's literally unbelievable what they're getting away with. How does the press let this go? Oh, an epidemic. The United States government says 12,000 people died each year. From 1985 to 1992. Now, a child in public school will tell you an epidemic starts out in one year. You got everybody involved. That's what they would put it. 12,000 a year for seven years in a row? That's not epidemic. By definition, it's endemic. And you would expect. In seven years, considering it spread sexually, that you'd have probably 15 to 20 million. We're a pretty active country when it comes to sex. We like to put it down, but we sure belie it in that behavior that we do. Oh, an epidemic, really. In Russia, 105 deaths from AIDS since 1987. In uh, Philippines, 80 deaths since 1984. Epidemics? See, it's the same thing. Same thing that they're doing now. There's so many countries, very, very few people are dying of the coronavirus thing, but it's a pandemic. Oh, no. What are we going to do? They're trying to make it a fear thing to, to raise up a fear of the people so they can create a vaccine and cause a lot of people, you know, to take the vaccine. I mean, if they could vaccinate everybody on earth, seven billion plus dollars, if it's only one dollar per vaccine. And you know it would be more than that. So they're looking at huge money here. Public money is the root of all evil. Continue. There is no epidemic. But who has to gain from this? Dr. Duesberg? What is he gaining from this? That alone should alert the press to who's telling the truth. And if you hear an argument amongst politicians and one calls the other names and doesn't answer the specific charges scientifically, who's the liar? Fauci and Gallo, instead of answering the scientific conflicts and contradictions that Dr. Duesberg has so brilliantly pointed out, Instead of answering them, they call him a homophobe. Okay, get a hold of that one. Instead of answering science that a doctor, a medical doctor brought out, they just start calling him names. Not much changes, does it? Okay, I've been the brunt of so many different names and smear campaigns and everything else over the years because of what I've preached and taught against the papists. They don't answer me. They don't answer me from the scriptures. Oh, you're a nut. Uh, you know, they call me all kinds of names. I'm not even going to repeat some of them and things. You've seen them. If you've been, you know, a friend of the ministry. I mean, it's just they are being called homophobes by coming out and saying that AIDS is not actually what's killing sodomites. See, little mind control things that, that Fauci and these other guys are doing. Name calling. Continue. Can you imagine? I've been called a homophobe too. I wonder. I come here with a message of hope to not only the gays, but to the blacks and the Hispanics and the, all the other outcasts of society. But strangely enough, are the only groups that have been connected with the so-called AIDS. Because you see, if you belong to one of those groups, you've got AIDS. But if you don't belong to one of those groups, you get the respectable diagnosis of you have tuberculosis, you have lymphoma, you have leukemia, you have Kaposi sarcoma, pneumocystis pneumonia, 30 plus diseases. Where is the press? How do they buy a story that a virus knows what country it's in? <laughs> Three symptoms in Africa, but 30 diseases in the United States and Europe. How do they buy the story that a virus has prejudices? 
It prefers men over women nine to one in the United States and Europe, but men and women equally in Africa. You know, again, kind of funny what he's saying here. It's compared to the modern coronavirus thing. You know, the coronavirus is really bad in certain cities and not there at all in others. Wow, magical. <laughs> yeah, some countries it's there and some countries it's not. It can come into some countries and only a few people die. Others, it's tens of thousands dying. Okay, so I guess the coronavirus prefers, you know, to kill Italians because there's Italians, you know, in Italy that died a lot. And then there's Italians in New York, so they got killed a lot too, you know. So, but other people in other states and other cities and things didn't die quite as much. Yeah, continuing. It knows whether you're gay or straight, married or single, black or white. It should be hired by the immigration department because it does one heck of a job. <laughs> this is what they've been feeding to the public, and this is what you and the press have published. Tony, so every time that I've stuck myself with a needle, I get calls from major television shows by excited young people who want to tell the truth. And then I get a call three days later telling me that it's been mixed at a higher level. That's no surprise. After all, okay, pre-internet here, basically, I mean, essentially, you know, internet was very, very young in its infancy back there, and infancy back in 1994. But, uh, you know, it wants to go to the media and everything else and get the truth out there. And, and any, you know, the higher ups say, no, squash that story. Yeah, you know, just change the algorithms today and squash the story through Google and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Censoring. Not much changes. Who am I fighting? Two drug industries. One supposedly legitimate and the other illegitimate. And they do an awful lot of advertising. The supposed legitimate ones. All those things out there that they sell for your colds and everything else, that's the pharmaceutical industry. And they also put out prescription drugs, most of them. And they pull the purse strings. And so we have a better propaganda machine in the United States than Hitler had in his time. Amen. What I've been preaching for a long time. Big Pharma. Exactly. See it over there in the comments. Yeah. Big Pharma. They control it. You see the, uh, you know, the advertisements on TV. Get Protolux. You know, Protolux will help you. And then everybody's smiling, running, pushing their grandchildren on swings, you know. And, and at the end, Protolux might cause death and suicide and headaches and vomiting and nausea and upset stomach. And, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Crazy. May the wrath of God fall on Big Pharma and the media that pushes it and the government that is are the stooges of them. You see, Hitler pulled off a lie, and he was condemned for it by most of the world, and were believed by three major groups of the Axis powers. The liars and killers like Fauci and Gallo. And Hazeltine and Essex and Flossie von Stahl and the market officials. These people are getting by with the lie and getting paid immense sums of money for it and praised from the rest of the world while they murder. The study at the university. Yeah. Again, I got to pause it here. Again. Oh, Dr. Fauci. Oh, he's a hero. Oh, he's doing so much. You see it all over the press, all over YouTube. You can't escape it. Oh, we're so thankful for Dr. Fauci. Oh, he's killing people. He's lying. He's killing people. He's destroying the economy. Him and all the other Jesuits. They're trying to divide and conquer the nation. Oh, he's so wonderful. Same thing going on back here. What a brave man. He's coming out and he's speaking against, you know, uh, He's speaking against, you know, the or he's speaking about the whole AIDS thing and, and everything else. Here he is. Oh, what a hero. No, he's making a lot of money off of a bunch of suckers. 
and you have a real doctor here that tries to come out and explain it. Continue. City of Miami was completely fraudulent. You see, I believed that the virus caused AIDS from 1984 to 88. And I treated AIDS patients. One of the few doctors willing to. Doctors were scared for their lives to even treat the patient. And by the way, sticking my finger, nothing new. I did it lots of times in treating my AIDS patients. And in fact, it's amazing that in spite of the fact that we are at such great exposure to this deadly disease, the incidence of the disease amongst medical personnel of all types is less than the general population. This is the first in the history of science. Think about that. How is it possible? Maybe the virus has nothing to do with it. Not only maybe, the virus has nothing to do with it. In 1988, I was invited to a dinner. Think about that again, compared to the whole coronavirus thing. If coronavirus is so horrible and deadly and, and everything else, um, why aren't all the doctors and nurses that are in the hospitals dying from it? The deadly, horrible diseased people come in. Shouldn't the medical staff be dropping dead? We have no known cure. What can we do? We have to get a vaccine. Oh, what if we're exposed to it? Well, the medical personnel are all the time. They're not dropping dead. Continue. Where Burroughs Welcome was going to push AZT as a drug for treating AIDS. And we were told we could ask questions during the dinner because Margaret Fischel was going to be speaking. And when she mentioned that the drug AZT had 56 side effects, I raised my hand. And I said, Dr. Fischel, how do you do a double blind study? on a drug with 56 side effects. You've got to know if you're on the drug. And she said to me and the rest of the doctors sitting there, well, the placebo had 31. And I raised my hand again. How could a placebo have 31 side effects? <laughs> yeah, okay. A placebo, typically, when they do a drug test, is a sugar pill. Or something of that nature that has basically no side effects. It can't have side effects. 31 side effects from the placebo. 56 from the drug and the placebo had 31. <laughs> uh, okay. See, the medical establishment just so stinking crooked. Good night. Continue. How could an inert substance have 31 side effects? I didn't know what was wrong then, but I knew there was something wrong. I knew there was something dreadfully wrong, and I didn't know how dreadfully wrong and how deadly wrong it was. But the answer came years later. The FDA, as you probably know, released AZT after four months of a proposed six-month study. They cut it short because one group in this double blind study where nobody knew who was on what, one group was doing better than another group. And so out of compassion, they terminated the study. I don't blame them for that. And sure enough, the AZT group was doing so much better than the placebo group. And so they released the drug. But then 18 months later, their own investigator from the FDA brought back his report. And guess what it showed? The participants in the study knew the first week who was on the drug and who wasn't. You didn't have a double-blind study. It wasn't the Cadillac of study. Not only that, some of those on AZT admitted to sharing their drug with members of the placebo group. That explains the 31 side effects in the placebo group. Oh, the way it's supposed to work when you test a drug, you have two blind groups, okay? They don't mean blind people. It just simply means they're not talking to each other. They're not saying, hey, I'm taking this pill. What are you, you know, they're supposed to be separated, not supposed to talk. 
okay, about what side effects you're feeling or about what the drug, you know, whatever sickness you're supposedly having and whatever. Not only were these groups talking with his AZT test, but they were also sharing the drugs. So the AZT people were giving people on the placebo the AZT drug. That's why the people on the placebo were getting side effects. Insanity. But we got to get this thing out. AIDS is killing people. There's a lot of people dying from AIDS. We have to get the vaccine. We have to get this special drug, this AZT stuff out. That's the only way we can help people. Sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? This is what they're doing now. Operation Warp Speed. We got to get a vaccine quickly. Our only hope is to have a vaccine. Wear a mask until then. Social distance until then. But the vaccine, we have to have the vaccine. <laughs> Same thing. I got to click on a comment here. Pharmacia sorcery. Exactly. Pharmakia in the Bible is a Greek word used for witchcraft in your King James Bible. So exactly, Elizabeth, you're exactly right. Um, yeah, continue. Some of them are taking AZT side effects. Right. And by the way, that makes it a complete watch out as a scientific study. Right then and there, the drug should have been discontinued, called back. But then came the kicker in, the, in this report. The individuals on the AZT in the four months of the study received six times more blood transfusions than the placebo group. What happens when you get a blood transfusion? You look better, you feel better, and you live a little bit longer. But the most important question and lesson from all of this, you must ask the question, Did those on AZT need six times more transfusion in a four-month period than the individuals on the placebo? Because okay, um, who's the guy talking down here? See, Shane, uh, who's the guy talking? Dr. Robert Wilner. Okay, right there, you can see under his name here, Dr. Robert Wilner. Um, he was there with Fauci and Gallo and the whole AIDS thing and whatever else when it all came out, and it's comparing that time to today. But um, again, this whole thing of showing the scam of this whole deal. Um, so let's continue. And they are, oh, excuse me. They, I was just trying to think what was that he was saying. They are, they're having to give blood transfusions to the people that are in this FDA study to see if the AZT is safe. AZT is the drug, okay, that they have for AIDS. So they're giving them blood transfusions. Oh, look, they're doing better. They're, they're healthy. You know, let's just give them more blood so that they're, you know, because they're dying so quickly. Give them more blood and, you know, whatever. They totally, they totally skewed the study to make this, this chemotherapy drug, this, you know, radiation cancer causing AZT look like it's good. What are they doing today with the modern vaccine thing that they're trying to get there for the coronavirus? Warp speed. We got to get this thing done. We got it done. No time for safety tests. No time for checking things. We have to get this drug out there. People are dying of coronavirus. Oh, we got to get the drug. Hurry, we got to get the vaccine. Hurry, you know. See? You see? Continue. Because you're dealing with a killer drug. And you need those blood transfusions to survive. And coincidentally, they made you look a little bit better and healthier than the other group. And then after I go through all this, invariably someone's going to ask the question, so what really causes AIDS? And I have to say it 10 times or 20 times in my book, and I'm going to say it again now. We have known for 70 years why the other individuals in the study died. The number one cause is malnutrition and starvation. Well, to an extent, that was true with some of these individuals, but only true because of the second reason. The number two cause is drugs. You recall, you fellows and, and gals in the press, a couple of weeks ago, you reported in your newspapers that we were killing off our senior citizens with too many drugs. And how do you cure them? You get them off the drugs. 
and how are these people? Um, medical doctors saying this stuff, folks. I come out and I say, get off your drugs, natural health, superfoods, herbal cures, you know, just nutrition, proper rest, exercise, get away from television, pray, read your Bible, getting older people off of drugs. And I get people saying, how dare you? You're trying to take people off their medication. That's life saving. They need that medication. You're the murderer. If you're trying to keep older people on drugs, you're the sick individual, not me. My words are backed up by a medical doctor right there, a real one, one that came out against the system that he was part of. Dying of so-called AIDS from the number two cause, drugs, both medical and street drugs. But one in particular that stood out and has been linked by 24 scientific papers with Kaposi sarcoma, and that's poppers or amyl nitrite. It's very rare that you see a case of Kaposi sarcoma in Africa because they don't use poppers. And this is the first disease, human disease, we can't give to a simian monkey. And I'm talking about legitimate diseases. Because you see, the virologists have been coming up with more diseases than you can imagine. And haven't you bothered to notice most of them never pan out? They disappear from the headlines and they never heard of again because they weren't diseases really in the first place. Like SMON, a disease in uh, Japan, for 15 years they pursued viruses. And what did it turn out to be? Enterobioform, a drug for diarrhea that they were using over there. Amazing, isn't it? So if you didn't get if you didn't get what he just said there, um, it was a drug for diarrhea that was causing this horrible, deadly disease. And they stopped using the drug, and all of a sudden the disease went away. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> oh brother. Continuing here. And you know, for those of you just joining, go back when this thing is done and watch the whole thing. It's so important. It's extremely important because it backs up everything I'm saying from a medical doctor. Um, yeah, continue. And they spent 15 years and lots of millions of dollars with just what our virologists have done. Wow, they hold a candle to Noah. For 20 years in Nixon's war on cancer, they spent over $20 billion looking for a virus that caused cancer. $20 billion spent by the medical goons looking for a virus that caused cancer. Oh, uh, oh boy. <laughs> you see? Oh, the cancer, you know, originally I think we it's caused by a virus. Oh, you know, okay, now we'll just change our story. $20 billion spent. Continue. And they came up empty-handed. They not only couldn't find a retrovirus, which was the ideal choice, because it doesn't kill cells, and it's multiplied by the cells, which is what cancer cells do, but they never found any disease that it caused. But guess what they chose for the scam of AIDS? A retrovirus. Already $20 billion in 20 years, we found nothing that it does. And we also found that absolutely it doesn't kill cells because if it did, it would commit suicide. It needs the cell in order to replicate, to be alive. So the epidemic would be over before it began. It's impossible. But this is the virus. They've just spent another $20 billion in only 10 years' time. And they're asking for more. And now they want to give us a vaccine. See? 1994, with the whole AIDS you know, epidemic thing. Nothing changes. People forget things. You don't learn from history. It's the same propaganda, the same thing over and over again here. Continue. Oh, will they make money with that? <laughs> they not only have a test for HIV, which by the way is not for the virus, it's for immunity. Like they say, it's the first disease in the history of medicine. When you're immune to it, you're gonna die from it. But now, 
They want to give us a vaccine. The test HIV tests for antibodies, not for the virus. Well, antibodies is what you get when you use a vaccine. You want to produce antibodies to fight the disease. I'm at a loss to understand. If we already have the antibodies, why do we want to create the antibodies? Kind of redundant, isn't it? Oh, by the way, if you take these very same antibodies and you put them in Gallo's culture in his laboratory, you just ruined his multi-million dollar culture that he's making a fortune out of. Because you see these antibodies destroy the culture. Does the press uh, bother reading? Do they understand the English language? And yet you want to condemn me and say that I'm out for publicity? Well, what is it that Peter Duesberg is out for? He held the reputation and still amongst honest scientists as being the foremost virologist in the world. What is Carrie Mullis out for? He just won the Nobel Prize. Why does he want to put at risk that incredibly marvelous reputation of being a Nobel Prize winner? Why would he put that at risk? Unless maybe there's still some honest scientists around. Now what about the rest of them out there? You know, I, I often ask myself the question, if my children were still in school, and I had house payments to make, and I had to put them through school, etc., would I be doing what I'm doing today? I don't think I've ever answered the question because I'm, I'm kind of afraid of what I might answer if I was going to answer honestly. And he is without sin, shouldn't be casting any stones. So I won't cast the stones at the thousands and thousands and thousands of virologists out there who are going along with this scam. Because you see, they would be out of jobs if they dared criticize Margaret Heckler or the head. They'd be without jobs if they dared to criticize the medical establishment that they work for. Yeah, continue. Heads of the NIH. They'd be out of jobs. And they'd have families that they have to support. And futures that would be down the drain. You don't cross the establishment. And so the lie is being perpetuated by the silence. Let that be a challenge to you, brethren. The lie is being perpetuated by the silence. Silence is consent. Even the most shy of us and whatever else, those of us who have a hard time speaking to people, you have to say something. Do something to fight this evil. Don't let the lies be perpetuated because we're all silent. We're supposed to be speaking up against it before anybody else. Challenging. And even Gallo would say to the press in answer to the question, what does he have to say about Duesberg's challenges? And he says, well, if we're wrong, why do so many people believe us? I mean, I could just see uh, Hitler and his stormtroopers saying to the press, if we're wrong, why does everybody do what we tell them to do? But they're running the show when you're looking at not just a simple lie of science. In the back of my book, I have the picture of Pedro Ticino of Spain, father of two young girls, a hemophiliac. Nothing wrong with the man, but because he received so called tainted blood, they had him on AZT. I stuck myself to get that man off AZT. I said, if I stick myself, with your blood, will it convince you there's nothing to worry about? And Pedro Cicino now, over a year later, is very healthy, having a wonderful life, enjoying his two young daughters. But all. Okay. Um, precisely. If you are on pharmaceutical drugs of any kind, get off of them. If you're on some kind of anti-psychotic uh, type of thing or whatever else, I forget what they call that. You know, some of the drugs are a little bit more dangerous. You have to kind of taper off of them slower. I get that. I understand. There are certain drugs you can just quit, boom, and you're done and walk away. Other ones, you got to be a little bit more careful to taper off of those drugs. But for goodness sake, 
take the time to research what drugs you are on and how to get off of them. If that guy that he's talking about there had continued to be injected and things and, and taking this AZT stuff, it would have killed him. He stops taking the drug, his health comes back. He was being, you know, lied to about this thing of having HIV AIDS. Continue. All of his friends are dying or are dead. This is real. And I don't blame those scientists out there keeping their mouth shut because their jobs depend on it. And I understand that exists in the press too. But you've got organizations. And in a way, so do the virologists have organizations. And if enough of the honest ones would stand up and take that chance, if you all stand together, you make a statement. And you can do that in your press associations, even though the people who own the newspapers and the television shows are afraid of losing their sponsors, you can at least keep your dignity. That's the choice you have to make. And that's the choice that I have had to make. I figured that if I didn't do what I knew was right, I'd end up cutting my throat shaving in the morning because I wouldn't be able to live with myself. And that's the honest, simple truth. I am sticking my finger to bring attention to the current Holocaust. And it's a dreadful one. When you terminate the DNA of a human being, they waste away and die in an inhuman fashion. We all have the right to die with dignity. But if we told them the truth, a lot of them wouldn't die at all. They'd simply get off the poppers and off the drugs. And there's no dishonor in being gay and admitting that you've been on drugs. Well, you know, here it gets into the thing a little bit of, of saying that there's no dishonor in being gay, a sodomite, or whatever else. Well, um, you can come to the Lord as a sinner, but the Bible does condemn sodomy. So I have to disagree with them in that. But, uh, um, yeah, continue. The decent human beings in this world will give you the support and help you, like we help drug addicts of, of all followings, so to speak. Those that would turn against you have turned against you anyway because of what you feel and what you are. And there are even some religious groups who have turned against the gays and said it was God's vengeance. How can you believe in a loving God and believe that that God would cause such a terrible disease amongst humans? Okay, uh, God does punish the wicked, certainly. That does not mean that I stand for what the media lies are about this whole HIV AIDS thing. doesn't mean that. But you can't twist the scriptures and say God won't punish people for contradicting his word, for sinning against what he you know, commands. So, again, I would have to disagree with Dr. Robert Wilner on that. Now, this is a man-caused disease. But we all make mistakes in life. And that shouldn't stop the compassion and the love and the understanding of decent human beings. And so I do the act of sticking my finger and create another blood brother in my life as the ancient Indians have done. And I will get another one today because I'm not afraid of getting AIDS. I know as a scientist that there is nothing to fear. I know what causes AIDS. I am not gonna lie to others nor myself about it. I don't like sticking myself with a needle because it hurts. And if you've ever seen my expression on pictures, you know that to be true. So, Tim Freitas, Jim, are you here? We're going to become blood brothers. <laughs> and please, to the press and to everyone else, I don't intend to stick myself 300 times because it wouldn't prove anything anyway. Oh, and might I say that a Dr. Gottlieb who achieved fame 
for being the doctor that noted the first four or five cases of AIDS, who said to me on a, a radio broadcast the other night, he would believe me if I took a liter of blood. That's a transfusion of blood. And I said, you know, you must be mad. Get me back in the proof. If you need a liter of blood to get AIDS, then nobody's going to get AIDS. In any case, well, I've got to do myself first, and then I have to do you. Yeah, but let me do you, your finger, okay? I mean, I've got to do you first, right? right. Excuse me. Then I'm going to do me. Excuse me, I had that backwards. All right. Wait a minute. I'm going to find. This is, is a heck of a time to lose my. I need to never. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a uh, typical butterfly needle set. If somebody has a scissor, and, no, I got it. Okay. It's sterile. And uh, usually we use it to take blood by sticking this in, and then we can inject things also. So uh, let's do that. We got this. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, let me put my glasses on, okay? I think you'd rather I do that. <laughs> I got to tell you a cute little story. Uh, shortly after my son was born many years ago, he's now 40, uh, he got some kind of an infection or whatnot. And I spoke to the pediatrician at the hospital. I was an intern at the time. And he said, go home and give him a shot of penicillin. So I, I took the syringe and everything home. And my wife held Bruce over her shoulder. And I grabbed his little bottom cheek. And I go like this. And I stuck it right into my thumb. So <laughs> careful. <laughs> you can tell I don't like doing this. Never have. Okay. Um, and we want to get a lot of blood. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now, I'm wiping this needle thoroughly in this blood. And I say to my friend Spousey, who got me, who got him, and uh, all Gallo and all the rest of those criminals, all right, that this is for the sake of humanity and no other reason. And believe me, it hurts. <laughs> and this is in the hope that it'll save the lives of millions of individuals who will die because of the greatest lie ever told. Thank you. Get off drugs is right. Get off drugs. Get off drugs. I agree. Absolutely. Now, I will be happy to take questions from the press or from anyone for that matter to clarify in your minds if there's any doubt whatsoever. Yes. Um, you said, uh, oh, I have several questions actually. Um, you said that you were tested in New York. Uh, by a leading physician there. Can you say uh, what that was in the Yes, it was in the Greenwich Village area. In fact, uh, Karen, I think you have the issue of the native. That ad should be in the back of the native. If you'll get it, we'll give you the name and the address of the clinic. Because it's widely advertised. And uh, that's where I went, where everybody else is going. And he's recognized by the state of New York and the forms he uses, uh, which I filled out are from the state of new york and by the way i do have a copy of the document which states that i'm he gives you the answer to the test in 15 minutes so it's quite a racket yeah. and by the way it's very interesting because that you asked the question because you see i was in a quandary as to what possible purpose could this serve if you have a test that's 99.997 percent inaccurate what are you proving you would treat somebody with a deadly drug on the basis of a test that's totally worthless. And by the way, let me point out that a research group in Australia in the past year has stated that not only is the test completely inaccurate, it's totally nonspecific. That you could be positive if you had the measles, if you had the flu, if you had a flu shot from your doctor. Okay. 
again, think of how it lines up with the whole modern coronavirus thing. People going in for things that aren't even coronavirus related, and all of a sudden they have it. They get coronavirus, you know. Continue. Or if you had any one of a hundred diseases, let's look at the scenario. This is serious business. Somebody gets the flu or gets a flu shot this year. But so what you're finally suggesting is that the man that you this prominent physician uh, in Greenwich Village, uh, he in fact said, "Don't tell anybody about this because I'm making money off of these tests." Are you finally saying to people, "Don't get tested"? I'm saying absolutely, do not get tested. Would you advise anybody to take a test that's 99.997 percent wrong? And you're saying that that's insanity. And by the way, when I said to this physician. When he asked me why I was there, and I told him I was a doctor, I said, because I'm in a heavy risk group. He said, aren't we all? And laughed about it. Because everybody knows that the medical profession sticks itself all the time. And the only individuals who are going to die of AIDS who are part of the medical profession in any way, shape, or form are those who are taking AZT or other drugs. Um, you said that AIDS is not an epidemic, it's an endemic um, circumstance. Of variety of factors, including malnutrition and drug use. How then can you explain the use of potential life loss in the 250,000 plus people who have died of AIDS according to CDC definition where drug use has been going on for centuries, and suddenly we're losing people in their 20s and 30s because I'm not sure what you're okay. That's an excellent question, really. And you're using your head. That's the kind of question you should have been asked of Gallo at the very beginning. And by the way, you said 20s and 30s are healthiest people. Isn't it strange? You got a disease, the first disease in the history of mankind that affects our healthiest. But what happened in the 60s? The drug culture began. What happened in the 70s? It heated up. At the end of the 70s, the gays came out of the closet and became an identifiable group. Now, I'll ask you, in a sense of redundant question, but yeah, I think it'll get the point across. I'm going to name five of 30 diseases. Tuberculosis, a new disease. Lymphoma, well, that's a new disease too. Leukemia, oh yes, that's a very new disease too. Pneumocystis pneumonia, another new disease, but lesser known. And Kaposi sarcoma, another new disease, no. These diseases and the other 25 have always been around. It's real easy, it's real simple to create an epidemic. You simply take a bunch of diseases and put them under one heading and then claim that one virus is responsible for it. Well, that's nonsense. <laughs> Take a bunch of diseases, put them under one heading, coronavirus, and then just blame it on the coronavirus. Okay? Uh, yeah. Continue. First of all, let me offer the proof. You, The reason it appeared, which I think is the essence of your question, as though it were some new epidemic coming on, is because it appeared in a select population, the gay population. But it only is appearing in gays who are on drugs. And especially and substance abuse, right. And remember, by the way, too, that alcohol is a drug. And remember, these individuals, many of them, extremely promiscuous, would get one venereal disease after another, and they'd be taking antibiotics for these diseases all year long. And it's a matter of medical fact that antibiotics are immune suppressive. Now, get that one too, brethren. Antibiotics are immune suppressive. Okay, if you get a cold and you go and you take antibiotics, whatever the doctor gives you, antibiotics or whatever, it's going to suppress your immune system. Okay, there's so many things in this video. That's why I wanted to play this thing. There's just so much stuff that this guy says. It's so important to get a hold of. You take an antibiotic, it will kill your healthy gut flora, your the bacteria, the good bacteria that's in your stomach that helps with digestion and everything else. It will kill that and you'll start to have problems. 
You need to have probiotics like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, fermented foods. Those things all, you know, kombucha, they all have uh, healthy bacteria. You need that. But if you're constantly taking antibiotics, it's going to kill all the bacteria. Antibacterial soap. What are they having people doing with this whole coronavirus thing? Wash your hands with antibacterial soap. Just constantly antibacterial soap, antibacterial soap, just all the time. We moved here to this new office. I came in, there was antibacterial soap around, threw it all out. I'm not even going to let it touch my skin. It's terrible, absolutely terrible. Continue. Now, let me offer one very important bit of investigative reporting for you. It was reported in the newspapers a couple of years ago that this HIV was found in blood that had been preserved in laboratories in the 1940s. They went back and looked at some of these samples. They found HIV. Just like coronavirus. We proved that in another one of our live streams. Coronavirus has been around for a very long time. Which, by the way, has been around certainly for thousands of years. But let's just use that one example. If we had HIV in the population in the 1940s, and we had homosexuals in the 1940s, and by the way, according to Kinsey, 10 to 15 percent of the heterosexual population preferred anal intercourse, where in the world was your epidemic? It wasn't suitable for a scoundrel like Robert Gallo in the 1940s. He wasn't old enough, or maybe he was born just about that time. For somebody to come along and to pull off a scam of this magnitude. And now they're caught up in a maelstrom. Now if the truth gets out, yes, it will deal a blow to the credibility of the NIH and the CDC and the FDA and the AMA. And my God, it is sorely needed. Okay. Um, think what he's saying here. If the truth comes out about the coronavirus, it will deal a death blow to all the medical establishments, NIH, CDC, ADA, or AMA, excuse me, all the medical establishment type of stuff. If the truth comes out about the coronavirus, it's been here for many, many years. It's very well known, but they have to wait for the right time to say, oh, it's been released. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's a pandemic. We need a vaccine so we can make lots of money. That's <laughs> so what's going on. Let's continue. And it's genocide as well. That's what it is. They're trying to kill people. That blow is necessary to clean up the act. Lifetime drug users all eventually come down with a syndrome that could be attributable to AIDS. Absolutely. In fact, these people, that is true. No, on the contrary. Remember, it's dose related. So it depends upon how many drugs you're using and how much of them over how long a period of time. Now, if you overdose, you never get to that point. Yes. In the combination of lifestyle practices, of um, microbial, the best place for microbes are dark, wet places, on fat houses, an excellent place to increase the exponential uh, representation of microbes around the world. If you did the end of that section for thousands of the rest of the year, have contact with those same men with themselves, they're very similar. Do you think? Well, I don't know. The, you see, the Romans and the Greeks had bathhouses, and there's no evidence that the party. NDA poppers and all the things that are going on. I agree that NDA and all the rest of these drugs are causing immune suppression. Now, I don't believe that sex itself causes immune suppression, but I do believe that recurring venereal disease will cause immune suppression. But the simple fact is, is that the virus has nothing to do with it. And that's the important thing. That I am certainly for people having a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. But let's not get into the idea that this is, again, a contagious disease. You cannot give AIDS to anyone, and you cannot get AIDS from anyone. Yes, Michael Elman. Would you consider the intense chronic Psychological terrorism surrounding HIV and AIDS to be a major cause of the fall of the human 
told two years ago I urinated pure blood without pain. I knew immediately what the diagnosis was. It was bladder cancer. I cannot fully describe what I felt at that moment. It is unbelievable. It's like taking a crash dive into the depths of anonymity, total isolation, fear, and panic. And all the faith in God or whatever faith you may have cannot handle that at that moment. When you start to get your wits together, and if you use your intelligence and then your faith, yes, spirit and mind are wonderful things. What you're saying is true. It's a sentence of death for most people. And immediately, their body metabolism goes into negative phases. Everything becomes destructive. Okay. What he's talking about there, if you didn't get a, if you didn't understand what he's saying, um, when you're diagnosed with this disease and you have coronavirus or you have cancer or you have whatever, it basically plunges your body into a very deep state of repression, depression, and you think, "Oh no, I'm going to die," and whatever. And this is lost people talking. Of course, as a Christian, you can say, "You know, well, Lord, if you want to get me through this, you know, if not, I'll go home to be with you." But lost people, their their fear, their greatest fear is death. And so, you know, it puts you into a negative state in your mind, which suppresses your immune system. Again, that's why they're really pushing this whole thing, this agenda of you might get coronavirus. Oh, what are you going to do if you get it? And things they're trying to scare people to suppress the immune system. Let's continue. This is modern medical voodoo. If a doctor tells you you are going to die, I'm willing to bet you're going to die. I'll be the first one to put money on the line and say, the chances are you're going to beat the statistics. You will die because you've been told so. This is American Buddha. So let me, I'll get back to you, but let me take someone else. Uh, yes, Dr. Wilmer, uh, I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I've been out here trying to uh, inform people about this uh, disinformation for a number of years now. Uh, Robert Gallo was a, was a proven medical fraud and a multimillionaire marketing a chest. Uh, of the uh, the uh, AMA itself in, in its own medical journals in the 80s that said that this is uh, these tests are bad science. The microbiologists have said in their own medical texts that this is bad science. This is, these tests do not work. The hematologists have said that this is this is false. These tests they say that they have used ozone to to uh, inactivate HIV, which HIV is a virus. It's a template or a pattern, so what can it do? I mean, these are just basic med medical uh, facts. How is it that this has gotten by the entire population, uh, uh, you know, and the media is pushing this lie? Arthur Ashe, for example, was on 30 pills a day the three months before he succumbed, including AZT. How is that not iatrogenic? And how okay, uh, he just said a, a statement there, or a, a word, iatrogenics. Iatrogenics. Let me look that up. Let me get a just do a Google search for that real quick so you can see what this means. Literally, uh, iatrogenics. Uh, whoops, genetics. Uh, <laughs> iatrogenics is when a treatment causes more harm than benefit, as iatris means healer in Greek. The word means caused by the healer or brought by the healer. Healer, in this sense, not uh, me, need not mean doctor. Yes, it does. But anyone who in, in your, but anyone intervening to solve a problem, iatrogenics, in other words, means you're being killed by your doctor. Essentially, you're being killed by the things that they offer. So remember that. Let's continue. How is it that that the medical profession can murder a million people a year? But according to their own study, the only Haven study that came out this year, they admit to that, to killing a million people a year. Why aren't they on trial? That's my question. By the way, I thank you for your comments, and I'd love to have a copy of that study and some of the information you talked about. I really would, because I've been going around saying it's the number three cause of death is iatrogenic disease. When I lecture before groups, I don't tell them what iatrogenic disease is. And I say to them, you know, here we're worried about the so-called AIDS epidemic, and I don't believe that anybody should die. I think we should all live forever. But Hmm. Wages of sin is death. Sorry, doctor. 12,000 a year? That's not an epidemic. 
60,000 died from automobile accidents. 120,000, I've been saying, and I hope you're going to help me change, 120,000 die each year. They admit to from iatrogenic disease, 500,000 from cancer, and 800,000 from heart disease. Okay. Did you hear the statistics he gave? Let's look at the actual thing here. This is worldometers.info. Communicable disease deaths this year. 7,271,654. He said cancer is 500,000. Uh, that's caused by cancer. 4.6 million. From 1994 to the year 2020, it went from 500,000 deaths a year with cancer to 4.6 million. Don't tell me it's because of environmental pollution or global warming or some kind of thing. It's because of hospitals doing this to people. It's because of chemotherapy and other, ever, other things like that. They're murdering people. Okay? Coronavirus is just the new little way that they can do it. And coronavirus is just, it's not even all that deadly. People, I mean, you know, I'll just show you here. If you've not seen this website before, um, worldometer, worldometers.info, okay? But right here, coronavirus updates. You can click on that. Coronavirus case, cases, 15,495,000 recovered, 9 million. Active cases, 99% of the people that are that have coronavirus supposedly, are in mild condition. Recovery rate, 94% of people are recovering from it. It's not that bad, okay? So again, you can go, I mean, this is, there you go. The science behind the whole thing. But look, isn't it amazing? I find it just so amazing. And look at this, the deaths today, or excuse me, deaths today, 83,700, and it's going up all the time. Huh. Deaths this year, 32 million. A lot of people die. The wages of sin is death. Right? But see, they'll scare people so that they can get their little uh their little agenda through. Let's continue. And I'm glad you're telling me it's a million because I've been saying they say it's number three. I really believe in my heart it's number one. Sure. I agree with him. Absolutely. Now, if we took the figure of 120,000 being killed by doctors, not malpractice, but as a normal course of everyday medicine, then doctors are 10 times more dangerous than HIV. <laughs> now you're telling me it's 100 times. Yeah, I, I want those figures really desperately. Please. Well, I will be indebted because that's powerful stuff, and I really, you know, it's funny. You never know where the figures are going to go, but with medicine, anything's possible. Yes, that in part. people die of being overweight obese than uh, die of AIDS you know um, uh, why don't they ban spoons for a while or something or you know you have to quarantine yourself from the candy aisle at the stores or you know you know ban ban jelly donuts no more jelly donuts or junk food you shut down fast food restaurants and whatever else because too many people are dying of obesity of course not we have to shut down the states to, to, to keep, people, keep people from eating too much ice cream. Of course not. Don't fall for the fear and the propaganda of the media and the medical establishment, brethren. That's the point here. Let's continue. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's a very good point. You know, I, I pick up some marvelous ideas from some very bright people, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm going to be using those. Uh, do I have your permission now? Okay. Oh, okay. That is another good question. First of all, I challenge anybody 
except there are always exceptions, and the exceptions are, of course, as we know, genetics. And uh, children um, sometimes born under circumstances where we don't have all the facts. But I would say 99% or better of the individuals born with AIDS, if they actually have AIDS, the mother was a crack mother, was on drugs, no question about it, or had an obvious incredible immune suppression for what other medical reasons, well, as they say. medicine for a lot of years. I had one of the largest practices in the state of Florida. And I can tell you, I treated a lot of kids over a period of time. They got very ill in their first three years of life. You mean they had AIDS? No, they did a test. I will guarantee you, I don't know what you died of, and I can't answer it. But I will tell you, these kids who are diagnosed as HIV, if they're given AZT, they will die of AIDS. Absolutely. Most of them will not die, just like most of the kids I treated did not die. But I had an occasional child that ended up with a meningitis and died. And by the way, our current Miss America, who is deaf and dumb, got DPT. That's what made her deaf and dumb. Yes, sudden infant death syndrome. Yes, now we'll go back to you. Go ahead. Okay, real quick, just to say it here again. Um, people are born with immune deficiencies because the mother of the when she's with child, she doesn't eat the right food. She doesn't. She's not practicing good nutrition. Then she's probably the result of bad, you know, immune system and whatever else. And they have a child, and then the child's born with all these issues, and sudden infant death syndrome happens. You know, all the child dies in the cradle or whatever else and stuff. And so what the medical establishment does is instead of just saying, "Hey, here's the simple way to take care of this: proper nutrition." Proper exercise, proper sleep, you know, get saved. Of course, medical establishment's not going to tell people that, but they'll they'll come up with all these new diseases. You know, oh, it's AIDS. It's AIDS. Yes, it's 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 AIDS. You know, what is AIDS? Autoimmune deficiency syndrome. Ooh, you know, um, immune deficiency. You have a bad immune system. How do you fix that? Proper nutrition. Oh, oh, you can you can pass malnutrition to other people. Uh, well, if you take their food away, I guess you can. But see, medical establishment, since in the 20th century especially, and on into the 21st century where we are today, they control through fear. You need to come in for your checkup. Why aren't you coming in for your checkup? What if you have cancer? What if you have some other serious disease? And look what they're doing with the coronavirus thing. We got to destroy your economic future. We got to make it so that you lose your home, you lose your job, you lose your health, you lose everything because of the possibility of a disease that's not really a disease. Continue. Um, how can how do you explain then the uh, T cell decline in those who have not taken age uh, and are not uh, psychologically affected? And I don't believe it to be a uh, a wonderful question. Really great. Now let me tell you a little bit about medicine. See, I was always confused by this T-cell thing. Because T-cells are nothing more than lymphocytes and leukocytes. They're our body's way of fighting infection. Now, when somebody came into my office with a bellyache, I would do a white count, which includes the T-cells. Now, if the white count was like five, six, seven thousand, didn't think anything of it. There's a bellyache, some bad food, maybe of a viral infection, you know, the great dumping ground viruses. They even had me thinking that way. But if it was 20,000, I alerted a surgeon. You see, 
The body creates the T cells when it needs it. If you don't need it, you don't got it. Why would you walk around with a lot of T cells when you've got nothing to fight? And I can tell you one thing we have always known. There is no correlation between severity of disease and AIDS, so to speak, and the T cell count. It doesn't match up, and I'll tell you why. You look a little bit confused when I said the fact that you will not have a high white count unless you have a severe infection. However, which means that if you don't have a high white count, it's, it's not bad. If, you're, if there's nothing else wrong with you, then I'd say, well, that's normal. Well, what do you, why do you want a high white count? <laughs> In other words, uh, your body is self-healing and self-regulating. The white T cells in your in your blood are there to fight to fight infection and disease. So if there's no infection and disease, your body doesn't produce them on a very high level. That's what he's saying here. God created your body to take care of disease, not a doctor. If you got a bad cold, you get an elevation in your white gas. Now, we know for a fact it's well documented. That you have individuals who have died with AIDS with elevated uh, T cells. And we have individuals who've been healthy. And when I tell you healthy, I feel sick by comparison at looking at some of these individuals. And they test out incredibly well. The best, healthiest specimens I've seen, the kind that most women say, oh my God, why is he gay? Is he? <laughs> Apologize for that. He's in the Lord's name in vain. He's a secular man. So, but his information he's bringing out is very important. That's why I'm playing the video. Because he's so good looking and so handsome and so strong and so healthy, you see. <laughs> you have no what? You have no T cells. T cells, if you don't have T cells, no. it's a barometer of, no. of how one is. No, because you, yes, you can use it to some degree as a barometer depending upon the situation, but basically, no, you can't. I'll tell you why. Do you know that you can change the T-cell count if you worry somebody? Completely established. I worry about these individuals who go in and get these T-cell counts one after another. Because their whole life is focused on these T-cell counts. And when it goes down a little bit, instead of being reassured, which is the way I would interpret it, they get panicky. Now they're really doing damage. And at some point, if they're on drugs, and sometimes even if they're not on anything, but because they've been told they're going to die, like the witch doctors of Africa and elsewhere, these individuals will die because they literally worry themselves to death. It's a crime beyond belief. They're the rare ones, I admit. But the fact is, T cell counts absolutely have no correlation with severity of disease. They can be low because you have wiped out your immune system, and they can be low because you don't need them. That's the important thing to understand. It is not a barometer for anything. And they lie, they lie, they lie, and then they lie some more. In this real case scenario, I know when I get tested, I am told I'm HIV positive. My T cell count could, I've heard from cancer research, be cut in half. So it's 50% of the T cell count is trying to get 50 people. The other scenario can happen too. It can go wild, go way up. Yeah, if it goes down because I'm told I'm going to die, isn't that enough to get me on AIDS? Oh, yeah, absolutely. First of all, let me tell you something. The CDC that let syphilitics uh, untreated when they had drugs that could have treated, just to observe, the same CDC has already admitted that between 40 and 60 percent of the cases listed at AIDS were never even tested for HIV. And not that it makes any difference because the test is meaningless. The CDC, 60% of the people tested didn't actually have it and whatever, and the tests don't even work. Kind of like the coronavirus thing. Same CDC, you know, the Catholic drug uh, creators or whatever you want to call, you know, run by Jesuit, uh, Robert Redfield, founded by a Jesuit. Yeah. Continue. So could this scenario also happen? I take AZT because it is a foreign invader. My T cells will go up. Yes, they initially do, and that's exactly what happens when you challenge the immune system, which AZT does. You get an initial rise, 
But then the AZT begins to do it, it begins to do its dirty work and suppresses your entire reproduction of your T cells, and eventually it goes through the floor. Absolutely. That is the scenario. Yes, we're going to try to finish one or two more of your questions. Okay. Somewhere in this, uh, you say that HIV itself is a harmless tissue, it's an innocuous retrovirus. Um, are you then saying that, that, as you said earlier, that you don't know what safe sex is? Uh, if I go back and report to my gay and lesbian readers, young gay men in particular, and there has been a lot of incidents among young gay men of uh, HIV, again, with the test that you don't believe in. Well, it means nothing. Until you give me one single document that proves HIV causes anything, it's meaningless. <laughs> But what I need to, here's what I need yeah. to mm -hmm. Is HIV sexually transmitted? Shall the, shall I go and report to these young gay men that they need not worry about Okay. Things? HIV, this harmless virus, can be sexually transmitted with incredible difficulty to the point where it becomes meaningless. All right? And right. And that hasn't been definitely proven. By the way, in one of the studies which they were present, pre presenting of 25 males where the semen was examined who were HIV positive, they were able to demonstrate only in two out of 25 the virus, and they only found one in a million cells. That is not disease. There's no way in the world, and especially with a virus, a retrovirus that supposedly is killing off the cells that it needs in order to replicate, even if you transmitted one virus, and it did kill off, and it was this terrible disease you say it is, there's no way it could cause disease. It's impossible. The lie is so compounded and so idiotic and so unbelievable that you literally have to fight your way out of the maze of these lies. They are all unadulterated lies, and the men responsible for them and women belong in jail. Yeah, again. Amen. Yes. Same thing with the whole coronavirus thing. Yet they'll work your way through the maze of all their lies. They're just constantly masks or you don't need masks. The masks can't protect you. Oh, you have to wear a mask. Um, well, you, you don't really have to wear it because of if you're sick, you should wear it. It's, it's more if somebody else is sick, they, their spit can't get in your mouth. No, but you have to wear it. We think maybe, well, maybe, but I, I, maze of lies, deception. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let me show this little picture here again. There he is, Anthony Fauci, back years and years ago. And here you have Robert Gallo, Anthony Fauci, and Harold Zurhausen, the German virologist, getting awards for killing people. Continue. Yes, and then we'll just Arthur Rack, Magic Johnson, and uh, Ms. Glazer, the way Ms. Glazer were all unable to infect their partners, yeah. even though they had years of unsafe behavior. Well, I would love her. So, so there's a considerable. Okay, uh, if you hear what he said there, Mac Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson came out uh, years before this whole thing here. And uh, came out and said that, you know, he was with all these different women and whatever else. And he was diagnosed as being HIV positive or he had AIDS. Also, I remember that I was back in high school, you know, when that whole thing happened. Uh, I would have been in high school uh, at this time. No, I guess now I would have graduated by then. But in 1994, I graduated. So because this was later, 1994. But uh, I graduated, you know, the summer of 1994. But point is, I remember hearing about Magic Johnson. And you know what? Magic Johnson, the basketball player, is still alive today. So I don't believe it. Well, let me just show you real quick. There he is. Still alive. Living in Lansing, or I guess born in Lansing, Michigan. Um, how is it that a guy that has this horrible... AIDS, HIV thing, how is it that he's still alive? Well, I heard, I didn't find the evidence for this before I did this video, but I heard that he was taking AZT and he stopped. He refused to take it. So he didn't die like the rest of them. Hmm. 
continue. Evidence that this is not the to protect them. No one said that the drugs might cause AIDS. There's an orange spring in New York, it's only the largest population of AIDS cases. There is a clear cut thing that anyone looking at it will find. The people using drugs develop the diseases called AIDS, and the people who aren't recover their health. It's that simple. Yes, and by the way, for that population that you're writing for, let me simply point out, again, using the government's figures, they say it takes an average of 1,000 acts of intercourse over 10 years in the United States and 10,000 acts of intercourse over 10 years in uh, Africa to transmit the AIDS virus. That's twice a week in the United States for 10 years on an average to transmit the virus. In Africa, that's 20 times a week on an average. And if you know what the belt curve is, there's got to be some individual out in Africa that's doing it 200 times a week. I want to meet that individual. <laughs> and now let me give you a set of figures which you must produce for your readers, please. The World Health Organization says that the annual conversion rate in the United States for HIV is 1 to 1.5 percent a year. Now, according to the figures given us by the CDC, there are constantly, for 10 years now, 1 million HIV positives in the United States. Now, that defies all definitions of an epidemic. How does it stay steady at 1 million if this is an epidemic that's going to kill everybody? And by the way, their predictions from 10 years ago were 91% wrong as far as deaths were concerned. Think of that. Now, hold on. 1 to 1.5% per year would average out to 67.5 years. For everybody who's HIV positive in the United States today to become full-blown AIDS. That's the annual conversion rate published, not by me, by the World Health Organization. But in Haiti, it's one-tenth that. So if you're HIV positive, I would advise all your readers to go to Haiti. They got a 10 times better chance of survival if they go to Haiti. Because there it will take 1,000 years for everybody, this is World Health Organization figures, for everybody who's HIV positive today to become full-blown AIDS. But hold your hats, hold the presses, young lady. Tell your readers this, and I quote the World Health Organization. And maybe I should put my hand like this while I say it. <laughs> but they say that in Zaire, you have 100 to 150 times better chance of survival if you're in Zaire than if you live in the United States. In other words, there, it will take 25,000 years for everybody who's HIV positive today to become full-blown AIDS. Now, I think you ought to urge your readers, all those with compassion and with heart, to take the first plane to Zaire and to stop anyone on the street and ask them, are you HIV positive? And if they answer in the affirmative, I think you owe it to them as a conscientious human being to say, sir or madam, are you aware that in the next 25,000 years, you're liable to die of AIDS? Those are government figures, they're not mine. The ridiculousness of it demands that you print those figures, that they give them to your readers. Okay. Again, you start to look into the quote-unquote science. The Bible talks about oppositions of science falsely so-called. And you look into it with a lot of the stuff that the medical establishment comes out with, and it just falls apart. And this guy's not a Bible-believing Christian, you know, whatever. He is a secular doctor. Lost. That's why I say, you know, a Bible-believing Christian doesn't need to fear real science. What this guy is saying is real science. Okay, we don't need to fear it. Oppositions of science falsely so called that's intended to control us. That's what you have to not fear, but that's what you have to condemn and speak against. Continue, not much more to go here. Mark, isn't it interesting that Africa and Haiti have similar situations in North America and Europe? Although Africa is closer to Europe, you would think that this infectious spread would spread closer to the center of Asia. The answer is very simple. Malnutrition and starvation can lead to death. And at a very variable rate, depending upon the malnutrition. But AIDS due to drugs 
is a much shorter period of time. Iota canal, Iota canal, there's a drug from uh, Siba Gaiji, or no, uh, Rock LaRouche, La I think. Uh -huh. They've been injecting people in Zaire and Angola and in Haiti with this Iota canal since the 1970s. And this is a hepatic drug. This kills the liver. And the liver is your biggest filter of your blood in the body. And if you destroy the liver, it has more than 500 functions in the body, then you're dead. By the way, let me throw out, I think, an overall principle to take a look at very seriously from the point of view of disease and death. And this applies to, to uh, AIDS as it would apply to any uh, disease problem in humanity. And with this, I'm going to end. The bubonic plague killed half the population of Europe. The question you must ask and must answer if you're going to be a rational thinking human being is why didn't it kill the other half? In the United States, in 1919, 18 million people died of the flu. My question is why didn't the other 92 million die? The answer to that, and every reporter owes it to their readers, is very simple. The bugs do not cause the disease unless there's a suitable terrain. And so the answer to all disease is not to take a shotgun and blow a human being apart, but to simply prevent the disease to begin with by living at peace and in harmony, not only with your fellow human beings, but with every organism on this planet. And thank you. Well, you need to be in, at peace with your creator. So I disagree with him on that, but that's the end of the video. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, some really, really good stuff in there. Um, some definite things to think about, to pray about. But again, one more proof that this whole coronavirus thing, it's all part of the corrupt medical establishment. Um, remember, the word hospital comes from the ancient Catholic hospitaler order. Um, the hospitals, the medical system, um, it all goes back to the Catholic Church. Uh, that's what the Bible says. So uh, just everybody just take heed to this thing. Okay. Uh, you have to get your health. You know, that's between you and the Lord. Right? You need to, if you have high blood pressure, figure it out. Okay. I had high blood pressure for a long time. I was on medication for it. My wife came along and just, boom, no, you need to stop taking that. I stopped taking it. I'm fine. Find out that the whole high blood pressure thing is a scam anyways. It's supposed to be for many years. It was the, uh, you know, the diastolic, I think it is, that's the high number. Diastolic for many years was uh, 100 plus your age. So my normal blood pressure is actually, you know, 145 over 80, 90, somewhere in there. But if you go to a doctor and you say it's 145, they'll say, oh, high blood pressure, pre-hypertension, you know, or hypertension, I guess maybe. Uh, no, it's not. And the Joint National Committee uh, came out in 2018 and actually changed the standards for what is considered high blood pressure. So now 140 over 80, I think it is, is now considered normal. Um, there's so much wrong with the medical establishment is what I'm trying to say. If you're on drugs, you know, again, I, they talked about a guy earlier that was on 30 different drugs, including AZT, and he died. I knew a guy the one time, one of the worst I've ever heard of. He was on, he was an older man going to a Methodist church where my parents were attending. He was on 75 prescription drugs, and he died. That's what they want. Prescription drugs are a kill-yourself-at-home uh, self-inquisition kit, okay? Uh, I don't know how to maybe say it exactly, but, you know, um, it's something that, you know, you can kill yourself with these drugs. And, you know, if you look it up in their own sources, they'll tell you. They'll tell you what it, they know. They know. And, you know, I saw somebody commented a while back and they said, well, a lot of these doctors, they're just, they're not looking into it. They're not, you know, checking it out and whatever. I don't care. They're still guilty. Okay. They, they could claim, you know, feign ignorance. I didn't know. I didn't know. If you're watching your patients coming in, you're prescribing drugs to that patient and they're coming back and they're worse and you're giving them new prescriptions and 
for stronger, higher dosages of the drugs, and they're coming back in and they're getting sicker. You are, if you're a doctor, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. Okay, you're doing harm. So every doctor out there is going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account for the fact that they are murdering people. And you get some guy like Fauci, um, that man is as good as being in hell with the door shut. Okay, and I pray that the Lord stops that wicked man. I pray for the Lord's judgment to hit Fauci and his family. Um, I pray the Lord's wrath falls upon that man. He's very wicked. And all the other Jesuits that are involved, including Donald Trump, who's a Jesuit educated at Fordham and sent his two boys to Jesuit schools. So don't tell me, oh, he just, he doesn't know any better and whatever else. It's a Catholic church, brethren. And how do we really fight against Catholicism? By exposing it for what it is, by witnessing to the Catholics out there who have no hope. Their best hope is purgatory when they die. Think about that. You're going to burn for a while to, to purify yourself because the blood of Jesus Christ is not enough to purify you. Catholicism is the enemy. We can, you know, this, this stuff, we have to come out. We have to say things against the whole coronavirus, whatever else. We have to stand up for natural health. But I'll tell you right now, it's Catholicism. We have to attack the doctrines of Rome. That's what we're called to do. Don't forget the spiritual war that's going on here. Right? That's very important. Stand up for your rights. I'm not having having anything to do with this forced vaccination or whatever else. Sorry. Uh, not going to happen. Um, but we also have to stay on the case of the Roman Catholic Church. Attack their new versions that go against our King James Bible. NIV, NASB, all of them. Based on the Nestle's text, which is made in conjunction with the Vatican. Um, go after that. Go off after their false salvation. Go after their post-trib system that the church has to have be purified. It's not the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the great, tri great tribulation. You see, so many different things that are Catholic. You trace it right back to the Catholic church. All roads lead to Rome. Don't forget that. And it's about getting these people saved, getting these people out of that system. So that's going to... I guess be it here. I just wanted to put that thing out and I thought, you know, I was just going to maybe put it out and link to it. And I thought, no, I really want to kind of back up what Dr. Wilner is saying um, just to kind of say, hey, this guy's right. Check this out. Look at this. Look at that. Um, let's keep fighting. Uh, you know, we're at war, brother. There's no kind of a, well, you know, I'm just going to, you know, kind of not fight the devil and he'll just leave me alone, you know. Uh, I don't bother him and he doesn't bother me. <laughs> well, uh, it doesn't work that way, brethren. Um, the devil's going to bother you. Um, and, oh, Lord's got to come back soon. You know, uh, even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen to that. But, brethren, we have no guarantee that it's going to be here in the next month or whatever else or the next year. Or we don't know. The Bible does not say the rapture is going to be at such and such time or that we're going to get caught up and, and whatever at you know the year 2020 or something we don't know we have no idea so there's a sense in which we are to you know say things that will preserve our lives here in terms of you know so we're not being put in camps and whatever else we have a right to fight for freedom right but don't get too sidetracked on that and then forsake the thing of witnessing to people and the thing of going against the real enemy the roman catholic church weigh this stuff out Okay, so just another very strong, very hardcore piece of evidence. And, and again, I got to say this. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in churches and, you know, do we have any prayer requests? Somebody raises their hand. Oh, please pray for me. I went to the doctor and they, they got me on these new pills and I'm really feeling terrible. But, you know, hopefully everything will be all right. I probably got to go back to the doctor again for another checkup. And I don't know. And, you know, a month later. I have cancer now and oh, I'm going to have to start going through uh, chemotherapy. And, you know, there's like this whole cult following of, of cancer survivors within these church buildings. And these gutless, spineless preachers don't have enough courage to say, stay away from the doctors. Get away from the medical profession. I mean, I've been in church buildings that were literally they have doctors going there and attending. 
guys that are on the take, you check out the uh, ProPublica, I think it was dot com, and you 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 check these this these doctors out, and they're getting kickbacks. They're getting money from the pharmaceutical industry to put people on drugs, and these people are claiming to be Christians. And they're watching their patients get worse and worse and worse when they're prescribing drugs to them. But I go to church and I'm a, I'm a Baptist and you know whatever. You know we have we have a whole practice and we're all Christians here. Cornerstone Family Health Practice, I think it was in uh, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. They claim to be Christians there. Went in for a checkup on something and whatever else against my will. I was you know I went in there. I shouldn't have gone, but it was a stupid thing I did. And the guy's trying to put me on drugs. Professing Christian, you know, you go in there and they got the little area for children to play, and it's good veggie tales and all this other stuff, which is terrible, but <laughs> you know. Uh, we need to we need to stand up and fight this whole system. You know, somebody that's on on drugs and whatever else and and things, get them off the drugs. Do what you can. If you're on drugs of some kind, prescription drugs, get off of those drugs. Nutritional health. So important. It's part of your personal relationship between you and God. So that's going to be it. Um, hi to everybody. Please go back and watch the whole thing. It's one of the most important videos I've ever put up. Um, you know, I remember I, I seeing Brother, Brother Jacob here put your comment up. We need to avoid doctors and hospitals like a plague. The irony. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, when I first got married, my wife went off on the whole medical establishment. She said, she said, if I ever get sick, she said, don't you dare take me to the hospital. If we're in a car accident or if I ever get hurt or whatever else, don't take me to the hospital. And I said, oh, come on. Yeah, you know, well, I'm I'm in a natural health, but I mean, let's be reasonable here. I mean, you got to go to the hospital for this or that or whatever. And she just vehemently, no, I will die first before I go to one of these places. You don't understand. And then time I've been married to her, I get to know my wife a little bit better. She had, you know, training to be a medic in the army. She went through that whole thing, Fort Sam Houston, I think it was, where she got her training, her medical training. Um, she's talked about that in her, in her testimony. You can see that. Um, and from Lutheranism to Salvation is what her testimony is called. Um, she also was raised. Her mother was a, a uh, you know, a nurse or kind of a, she was in the whole um, cardiac rehab thing and whatever else. And um, she was trained by uh, Jesuit doctors from Creighton University in Omaha. So, you know, my wife's from that whole world there. And they started to experiment on my wife, by the way, when she was one year old. Um, so with all the medical establishment out there, a one year old baby, and they started doing medical experiments on her. So uh, her parents took out medic or, um, insurance policies on her and things because they you know i guess figured she was going to die and um just just horrible absolutely horrible the stuff my my wife has been through and i don't think she's crazy anymore i did at first i thought oh, come on you know not across the board crazy but i just thought yeah come on honey this don't go to the hospital thing and all this stuff i don't think that way anymore i've learned a lot from her and um so um Please, if you're out there and you're on drugs, get off of them. I mean, you heard it from a medical doctor. Get away from drugs. Get away from drugs. It's not just me. So I don't even care if you're an atheist or a sodomite or Roman Catholic, Jesuit, whatever you are. Don't get on drugs. Don't get on drugs. So, uh, and, and by the way, let me just say that the damage that was done to my wife over the years um, through all the stuff that she went through um she's come out of a lot of that and nutritional health is bringing her back and everything so there's been a lot of detoxing a lot of things that she's had to come through and so there's no oh well i've just gone too far and i can't you know come back or whatever no um you can come back uh, nutrition god's nutrition god's health system of health is so much more powerful than the the drugs of the death cult known as the medical establishment um they they want to kill people that's the whole thing you know you can kind of surmise and well it almost looks like they want people to be sick so that they can make money off the people that's not even a, a a theory anymore it's it's proven fact that's what they want 
and you, you get into these higher level elites and stuff, they want to kill large numbers of people. They're going to do it through the medical inquisition. And they'll get the, you know, it's, it's such a sick joke because they're literally getting people to kill themselves with the drugs that they're giving them. And they know about it. One of their books. Side effects, side effects, side effects. Don't get this stuff on your skin. It's toxic. It's bad. It's terrible. Here, just eat it. So that's going to be it. Um, you know, over here in the comments, you know, some of the fellowship that's going on over there, praise the Lord for that. Um, if you have health issues and whatever else, start putting stuff in the comments. You'll find somebody that can help you. Um, so that's going to be it. Thank you, everybody, for, for watching. Um, some neat studies coming out here before real long. Going to be doing more live streams now that we're a lot closer to our home here at the office. So this is eventually going to be, this whole wall is going to be uh, bookshelves going back this way. Um, that's a fan there. It's one of my fans. Okay, that's a joke there. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we're going to have, that's going to be going, that dresser. It's a beautiful old dresser. Thank the Lord for it. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, you know, be moving things around, and there's going to be banners up and all kinds of good stuff. And eventually, um, we're going to be having some, you know, actual stuff on the outside here. Not sure about this, praying about this, but this window right back here that I'm pointing to, that window faces the street. The street is the main street of Patton is only maybe, I don't know, eight feet out that way. And so I'm thinking about maybe when I start doing live streams of sermons, I might actually put this week's sermon is in that window. Um, but, you know, due to the type of preaching that I do, I don't want rocks thrown through my old window. <laughs> I, I'd really, I'd hate to have that happen. So we'll see. I don't know if I can get some, you know, some kind of special bulletproof, you know, material or something <laughs> bulletproof glass stick it out there i don't know um we'll see big plans for the future though i want to i'm going to be you know really excited to start you know um dealing with people in person so um a lot more live stream type of stuff coming up in other words in the future and of course dealing with people here locally so it's gonna be pretty neat actually the um UPS is pretty interesting. Um, UPS delivery that was scheduled for to come here ordered some superfoods actually. Uh, brother sent us some little sample type of thing. Said, "Hey, that's really good." So we ordered some. It's supposed to be coming here by UPS, and the um, they called and said, "We need a street address, not a PO box. So please call us." I called them. And the woman said, hey, she said, I just want to say, I really appreciate your answering machine there. She said, what do you do exactly? And I said, well, I do preaching and teaching online, kingjamesradioministries.com, kingjamesradioministries.org. So we have two websites. I do YouTube and everything else. And she said, oh, well, that's that's great. She said, my husband's, husband's a Baptist preacher up here in Holton. So pretty cool. You know, didn't get into, you know, are you saved? And what, you know, what do you believe? In? I just say, praise the Lord. That's great. You know, if the Lord wants to bring her to the truth, he'll bring her to the truth. So, anyhow, uh, that's going to be it. Thank you to everybody out there for watching, and we will see you in upcoming videos. Some good stuff coming out.